So uh, I'm just trying to open. Okay, uh, so good afternoon, so everybody. That. Thank you so much for joining us again on the African Reform Movement channel. My name is Uche. And again, we're with distinguished, distinguished rather, Dr. Ni Awidako, where we discuss all things African politics with an emphasis on Ghana. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. Just to let you know that Dr. Ni has a number of different social media platforms that can contact him on. Those of them there at the bottom of your screen. If you don't catch them right now, don't worry, because on his YouTube channel, these are all there. So you can take them down from there. Just want to encourage you to make you to the chat function and during the conversation, if there's anything you want or you have a question about, please put it into the chat function. And at the end, if there's enough time, Dr. Nee will go through the questions and he'll answer as many as he can. Dr. Nee also has written a number of books, all of which can be purchased at his bookstore, which you can see details of at the bottom of this screen here. But again, if you don't have time to write it all down, don't worry, because they're also linked on his YouTube channel. If you are going to subscribe to his YouTube channel, please don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you will receive notifications every time we're getting ready to go live or Dr. Nee post any comments or anything on his YouTube channel, okay? So today's topic is about Nehemiahism. Nehemiahism. And Dr. Nee can take us through his, his unique takes on how to position ourselves to really make a difference in Africa. Sorry, Dr. Ni. Nee. Hello. Dr. Nee. Yes. Hi there. I'm Before here. you start, could you turn off whatever that is in the background? Could you turn off that is what that is in the background? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh my god. Do you have I'm a TV or something? Rugby. Yeah. I was watching rugby, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, welcome to the show, Dr. Ni. Nee. So Let's get started with your views on doctor, uh, on doctor, on doctor. Let's get started with your views on Nehemiahism. What does that mean? Nehemiahism, or what I actually rebadged Nehemiah's revolutionary pathway. And uh, basically, Nehemiah was a prophet of Judah um, in the, uh, the Israelic period. That's, I think, 2,500 years ago. Mm -hmm. Now, you see, when you are faced with a problem, there are many ways you can solve that problem. And when you look at the book of Nehemiah, which I believe, or which I think is the most revolutionary book in the Bible, you see that the situation of Judah at that time was very similar to that of Ghana now, or to the, for that matter, for, for, for the rest of Africa. Judah had been conquered by Babylon and Ezra had been taken into Babylon. And then Medo Persia, today Iran, also conquered Babylon, which is now northern Iraq today. So now, when Medo Persia conquered Babylon, they took possession of the assets of Babylon that included Judah, where Jerusalem is, is, is in Judah. Now, at the time that Nehemiah came on the scene, he was a cupbearer in the court of the king of Medo-Persia. He's got a long name. I'm not interested in calling it a long name. And then on one occasion, people from Jerusalem, Judah, came to uh, Nehemiah to tell, to update him about the position of Jerusalem and the Jews who were living in Jerusalem at that point in time, that they were in distress and the walls of Jerusalem had been broken down and, 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 the, and the gate of Jerusalem had been burned with fire. It was such a bad news. So now Jerusalem then was a colony, was a colony or a province in the kingdom or the yeah, in the empire of Middle Persia. Now the question then is, how should Nehemiah approach the king? Should it be that of rebellion? Should it be that of whatever? He decided that he was rather going to lobby the king. That is why this topic, I name it Nehemiah Revolutionary Pathway Lobbying and National Reconstruction. He decided to lobby the king, and this is how he went about it. So when you say Nehemiah, Nehemiah is in, we are talking of 
lobbying and national reconstruction the process of national reconstruction as a colony or as a small weak state how do you rebuild yourself after destruction mm -hmm. that's where africa is that's where ghana is there are many options and initially i i, I said nehemiahism then later on when i was doing the slides i changed my mind and i said nehemiah's revolutionary pathway because no kwame nkuma wrote a book revolutionary pathway and he mm -hmm. took the book actually from chairman mao's way of looking at revolution but ghana is not china that's right china mm -hmm. is 20 percent of the world population a huge massive kingdom of over two thousand years history so what we work for china may not work for ghana because completely different setting ghana is a small country very much like judah a weak country very much like judah so but it probably if Nkuma had read Nehemiah very well, would have been better informed about the, about the revolutionary pathway that might be more appropriate for us, considering our weak position in the general scheme of things. But Nkuma will be for another day. Now, can we have the first slide, please? Okay. <laughs> yes. Can you see that? Um, not at the moment. Maybe let me put on my glasses again. <laughs> no, no, yeah. By the way, we can. No, I can. Oh. Yeah, it's, I think it's coming I... out. I think it's coming out. Yeah. 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 Nehemiah's revolutionary pathway, lobbying and national reconstruction. Second slide, please. Okay, so what are the principles? I think there's a delay the between my side and your side. Yeah, yeah. So we have faith and funds, plan and mindset, and then to cap everything, dedicated leadership. We'll go into all this uh, in the next couple of minutes. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so we read about this the last time, importance of history. The things that were written before us were for our learning, Romans 15, 4. So that to the patience and comfort of the scriptures, we might have hope. So whatever we read from the scriptures that were written before us, they were meant for our own comfort and patience and hope. And that's where I situate Nehemiah. You see... One of the most important things in life is one thing I call guidance. 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 I always tell my children, guidance. Do not resist guidance. To go guidance, as far as I'm concerned, is the transfer of success. It's the process of transfer of success. So when a successful person guides me, he's actually transferring his success to me if yeah. I listen to him and I go according to what he says. Yes, I agree. If I resist, trans if I resist guidance, I am resisting transfer of success. So how successful you are is linked to the kind of guidance you get. Mm -hmm. And that's why when I look at how do we move forward as a continent of oppression, of suppression, of depression, we have to take a guidance from a people who at some point in time were also oppressed, suppressed, and depressed. And that is the story you find in Nehemiah, the most revolutionary book in the Bible. Guidance is the transfer of success. And that's where Nehemiah comes in. And through the patience and comfort of what Israel went through 2,500 years ago, we might have hope that our situation is not terminal. Next slide, please. Nehemiah. Faith. Now, you find most of these, I mean, these are long scripts I'm not going to read, but I've just put them down. So I'm not going to read, or I'll probably read a couple of them. Um, Nehemiah, faith, Nehemiah 1, when he was told 
that Jerusalem was in distress. The Jews were in distress. The walls have been broken down. The gates have been burned. He had to develop faith. And he had a direct confrontation with God, reminding God of things he told the servant Moses and blah, blah, blah. And started praying, fasting and praying. And what did I say? Fasting? You know, I yeah. don't believe in fasting. All right, good, good, good. I know you don't believe <laughs> fasting. Fasting and praying and whatever I was doing, directly telling God that, God, listen to yourself. And then he told God that, listen to yourself and who wants to fear your name? And let me have prosper. Uh, let me prosper when I go before this king. He didn't even say, when I go before this man. When I go to lobby this man, Lord, let me have favor. He built up his faith by fasting and praying so that the Lord of heaven, the God of Moses, will hear him when he goes to lobby. And he went to, when he went to lobby, I think I have to read that. You know, and that's, I think it's in the... Uh, um, I think I have to read that. Okay. And it came to pass in the month of Nisan in the 20th year of King Artaxerxes, when one was before him, that I took the wine and gave it to the king. Now I had never been sad in his presence before. Therefore, the king said to me, Why is your face sad since you are not sick? Since you are, you are not sick. This is nothing but sorrow of heart. So I became dreadfully afraid and said to the king, may the king live forever. Why should my face not be sad when the city, the place of my father's tombs, lies waste and its gates are burned with fire? Then the king said to him, what do you request? So I prayed to the God of heaven and I said to the king, if he plays the king and if your servant has found favor in your sight, I ask that you send me to Judah to the city of my father's father's tomb that I may rebuild it. Then the king said to me, the queen was also sitting behind him, how long will your journey be and when will you return? So he pleased the king to send me and I set him a date. Furthermore, and this is the thing, furthermore, I said to the king, if he please the king, let letters be given to me for the governors of the region beyond the river that they, may, they must permit me to pass through Till I come to Judah, and a letter to Asaph, the keeper of the king's forest, that he must give me timber to make beans for the gates of the citadel, which pertains to the temple for the city, and all those things. And the king granted them to me according to the good hand of my God upon me. So Nehemiah prayed that one, the king, he prayed to God that God should give me favor when he met this man. And God gave him favor. And then the king granted him to go and build Jerusalem and Judah. And also he lobbied the king so that he could get timber and stuff from the king's forest to go and do the job that he wanted to do. And the king gave them to him. And that attitude, that attitude has become part of the Jewish consciousness. Wherever they go, they form lobby groups to lobby the kings wherever they are. Today, they are in America. They pay to the Republicans, they pay to Democrats because they need to lobby the king of the most powerful country in the world at any given time for the sake of Jerusalem. And they are doing that up to today. You see, when we say lobbying, and the consciousness of lobbying, it doesn't mean to do it in the grand style the way the Jew, uh, the way um, Nehemiah did it. It can come in different ways. I'll give you one simple example. My hospital, the district hospital in which I work, I go there, consult and see patients. Mm -hmm. It was redone, it was rebuilt. Now, when it was, I saw that, wow, what a beautiful district hospital. Now, I know how much it costs. Um, to do proper engineering and proper architectural work for this kind of thing. So after everything has been done, I went to my CEO. And I said, Rob, I've come to see you about something. He said, what? And he said, sit down. Rob, I've come to see you because I want the plan, the plans, the engineering, the architecture plans for the new hospital. He said, what do you need them for? I said, I think it's a very, very good hospital. And I want to go and do the same thing in Ghana when I become president. 
I want every single district hospital to be like this hospital. Then he looks at, well, it costs a lot of money. I have to take it to the board. <laughs> yes, give me. I said, well, you are free to buy. Wow. Tell the board that Dr. Duncan is so happy with what they have done, and I want to replicate it in my country. Mm -hmm. It is lobbying. Okay. As I'm talking to you, I have the plan. It costs at least hundred thousand dollars. Wow. I have it with me that I will take to Ghana one day. So I've got the letter from the king mm -hmm. to take to go and build this hospital. So it comes, but you have to have that consciousness. Yeah. You have the other consciousness that you are there at that particular time and you hear of that the people in Ghana are in distress. Your own people are in distress. You know that the walls of Ghana have broken down and the gates of Ghana have been burned with fire. Mm -hmm. What do you do about that? You are in the court of the king. You are a car bearer. I'm a taxpayer. I pay the highest marginal tax in this country. I've done that for 15 good years. What do you do to the king? Now, we are talking of going to the king's forest, using king, the, the wood from the king's forest, to build your own gates, to build your own wall. You are not borrowing money from IMF. You are not borrowing money from World Bank. You are not borrowing finance capital from anybody. You are going to the king and asking the king, Father, pray to God without fasting. Pray to God that... <laughs> that let me have favor before this man and you go there and i went to rob i just say i just said no, i'm going to get it from him and half of the members of the board were my patients anyway and i lobbied all of them that i want this thing so i said yeah it's such a beautiful hospital that whenever i go to the first one i'll build i will Name a ward after this hospital. Say, so, wow, that's a great idea, Ni. They all were clapping. They gave it to me. I have it. She can't know what I'm talking about. Wow. That's very impressive, actually. I must admit, but that, that's, that's very, very bad. That, I don't think very many people have thought doing that. No, because the consciousness is not there. That's why we are having these lectures. People may even have bigger opportunity. As she herself, she was once sitting in one of our coffee shops, and the mayor, our mayor, went to her and said, I believe you must be Mrs. Dark. Because I'm the only black man in the midst of many white people. So the most likely, the, 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 the black woman there is most likely to be there because of me. And she just said, Yes, I'm the one. Mm -hmm. I'm the I'm the wife. I later on joined them, and he was talking about. Oh, you know, he himself was a big uh, uh, dairy farmer. He's got 800 dairy cattle. He's been in Tanzania before. And he was talking of, they immediately, you know, they, so far as I'm there, the education will change as to what can you do with dairy farming for us in Ghana. Immediately. I, 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 because you have to have the mind of Nehemiah. Mm -hmm. He was our mayor. And in that part of Victoria, we are producing... Two billion liters of milk a year. Two billion liters of milk. That will feed Ghana, Togo, whatever. Two billion liters of milk a year in that area. So they have the technology. They have the know-how. Mm -hmm. They have everything that we can team up with them. And they can come and invest their money. And we are not going to borrow finance capital to do the same thing. We are going to bring their money and do it for us. They will bring it from the king's forest to come and do it for us. And we will get people who will employ our children and we will drink their milk and we will export it to Nigeria. But you have to have that mind. That how do you solve this problem? How do you solve finance capital problem? You are a small little country. Mm -hmm. Are you going to lobby the king or fight the king? And that's the problem. Okay. People okay. believe in grandstanding. They mm -hmm. think grandstanding is vision. I don't believe grandstanding is vision. You got to see your position. And you go and lobby the king. And that's why I say Nehemiahism or Nehemiah's religion pathway starts with lobbying the person who has power over you.
and draw the person in. Let the person believe your vision and it works for you. All right. We can then go to what happened? What happened in Nehemiah 2, oh. chapter 9? Yeah, so we are still there. Nehemiah 2, chapter 9. So, oh, yeah. So then. Then I went to the governors in the region beyond the river and they and gave them the king's letters. Now the king has sent captains of the army and horsemen with me. When Sambalat, the Horonite, and Tobiah, the Ammonite, official head of it, they were deeply disturbed that a man had come to seek the well-being of the children of Israel. That a man, they were deeply disturbed that a man had come to seek the well-being of the children of Israel. That is Nehemiah. A man had come to seek the well-being of the children of Israel. And the against people were deeply distressed. What we need is a man who come and seek the welfare of the children of Ghana. A man who come and seek the welfare of the children of Nigeria, a man who will come and see the welfare of the children of Togo, a man who will come and see the welfare of the children of Ivory Coast, the man who will come and see the children and see the welfare of the children of Benin. And when that man comes, others who are benefiting from the status quo will be very disturbed. And that is what Nehemiah stands for a man who seeks the well-being of his people so when you ask me from the beginning what is Nehemiah is in that is a doctrine the doctrine of a man mm -hmm. who seeks the welfare of a uh, well-being of his people and they always get mm -hmm. the oppressors and those who benefit from the suffering of his people deeply disturbed as I'm talking to you, I know there are people in Ghana who will be deeply disturbed because their time is coming to an end. We are taking over our country. How it's going to happen, I don't know. But whenever an EMA rises, there is redemption. Now, let's see what, let's continue. Now, Nehemiah, when he never told anybody all these things, when he met the people, and he told them his vision and everything. And I told them of the, and then I told them of the hand of my God, which had been good upon me, and also of the king's words that he had spoken to me. So they said, Let us rise and build. Then they set their hands to do this good work. So Nehemiah, after all these things, going through the king's forest and the regions, came to Judah and he gathered the people there and he told them everything and the good hand of the law that had been upon him and the words of the king, the promise of the king and the thing the king had told him. And when he had said all that, they said, let us rise and build. Let us rise and build and it's, 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 it's amazing. You see, um, you will see. Then they, say, then they set their hand to this good work. Then they set their hands to this good work. Now, all these things is part of the preparation. It's part of the preparation. What we are doing here, people feel that, oh, I should talk about what is happening in Ghana today, da, da, da. No, no, no. That's not the way to do things. You prepare step by step. Get able to understand what you are saying because what you want them to do is for them in unison to say, let us start doing this work. Let us start this good work. Because that's where the problem is. To get a mind focused on the most important issue. Now, the next thing, which is very important, you realize in this whole revolution is Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 6, I think. Very important. I know what it is, but I want to read it. Okay. 
Right. Nehemiah chapter 6. So we built the wall. And the entire wall was joined together up to half its height. And there's only one reason why that happened. For the people had a mind to work. Now, he had convinced the people, and we didn't know, he built a wall in 52 days. No cranes, no this, no this, no that, in physical. He built the wall, in the whole wall in 52 days. He said that at that time, if the original wall was 2 meters, at that time, they got into 1 meter. If the original wall was 4 meters, at that time, they got to 2, they got to half the height. And he said because the people had a mind to work. And that is how walls are built. Walls are not built by praying. I mean, if God did not do that for Jerusalem, he's not going to do that for Ghana. If God did not allow angels to come down, to come and build the walls of Jerusalem, there is no way the angels are going to come down to do, build the walls of Ghana or the walls of Nigeria or the walls of Africa, so to speak. Because the people had a mind to work. I mean, because of attacks of the Sambalat and the Tobias and the Arabs and whatever, it got to a time that Nehemiah divided the people into two. That whilst one group was working, another group was standing watch as soldiers to ward off any attack. They had a mind to work. Mm -hmm. And that is a problem. That is the most difficult part of everything. The mindset to work. And I'm sorry to say that I do not see that we have that at all, not at this point in time. And believe you me, we can do the lobbying, we can get everything we want from there and that and that, but if the people do not have their mind to work, it will come to nothing. Do you think it's the people that don't have the mind to work or is it the government that doesn't have the mind to work? The people do not have their mind to work. The people elect the government. The government reflects the people. The, people, the government is not part of any, uh, any terrestrial or any celestial body. They are from the people. They come, to, they come from the people. And the things they do, somehow, the people, consciously or unconsciously, agree with it. That's why the government is there. But do you not think that, because, like, for example, over here, governments are brought in based upon the promises they have made to the people. The people listen to these, um, listen to their manifesto, look and say, okay, well, if you can actually do this, I'll definitely vote for you. Definitely, you have my votes. But then typically, yeah. we find again and again, when they are voted in, they do not do the things that they said that they were going to do. So that doesn't strike me as being yeah. a problem of the people. It's a problem of the leader, not the people. No, no, it is actually all the time in our conscience says that the powers of the constitution and the constitution are exercised on behalf of the people by the government there are ways of holding government account but what i'm saying is even there are ways of holding government account if you decide that you will not agree to this and people decide that with one voice who will not agree to this there is nothing that the government can do i'm telling you if the people decide that we will not agree to this. It happened in Lebanon. Hezbollah and General Awin, the Christian militia, well, they came together and said that we will not allow Hariri, whatever his name is, whatever, whatever, we will not allow it. We will not allow it and nothing will happen because every government is there to exercise power on behalf of the people. But that's not even what I'm talking about here in terms of the people had their mind to work. You see, when I'm talking right now, after mm -hmm. this, even people coming to ask questions on comments, they are not ready. They are not ready. They do not see, they do not know that in, in spite of my very, very, very heavy schedule, I read the whole 13 chapters of Nehemiah again yesterday for the third time, as far as I remember. Be why do I have to do that? I don't need to do that. I'm not the one suffering in Ghana, but when you are like a Nehemiah, you don't look at things that way. But whatever I do, whatever I do, whatever I, whatever I do, if the people who have been affected, who are in distress, 
like Nehemiah was told, are not ready to work. Whatever I do will come to naught. Mm -hmm. That's the people I'm referring to here. All right. Now, and the best of all, the best of all, which is what I'm going to read now, about Nehemiah Hizeh, the revolutionary pathway. You know, um, that's what I'm going to read now. And it's in Nehemiah 5, 14 to 16. I have to read this one. I have to read this one. And it's okay. called dedicate, Dedicated Leadership. And it says that, that's Nehemiah. You see, the whole book was written in the first person. Nehemiah mm. talking. Moreover, from the time that I was appointed to be their governor in the land of Judah, from the 20th year until the 32nd year of King Ataxerxes, 12 years, neither I nor my brothers ate the governor's provisions. He refused his entitlement. Yes, he refused his entitlement. Not himself, not his brothers. But the former governors who were before me laid burdens on the people and took from them bread and wine. Besides 40 shekels of silver, yes, even their servants bore rule over the people. But I did not do so because of the fear of God. Indeed, I also continued the work of, of this war and we did not buy any land. All my servants were gathered there for the work. Bless you, Nehemiah. And that is the difference. He himself and his brothers did not eat the governor's provisions. They were not, and they did not buy any land. They did not take anything for themselves. They were there to build the wall. And all the people were gathered there to do this work. It's not only the people who had the mind to work, but had the governor who wanted to see the work done. It did not put burden on the people. Look at what is happening in Ghana. Look at what is happening in Ghana. Look at what is happening in Nigeria. Look at what is happening all over Africa. Look at what government are taking upon themselves building houses, doing this, seizing land, doing this. There is no way, nothing can make this, those countries work. Because if you want to see guidance, how a weak, how a depressed, how an oppressed country can rise up from the ashes, the guidance is from Nehemiah. And this is what Nehemiah did. And if you don't do that, I'm telling you, you are not going to be successful. It is impossible. You have to do it for the people to see so that they can emulate and their mind to work will be strengthened. Can we have the next slide? So now the question is that can we have a Nehemiah today? Can we have somebody who can take a no country and make it a new country? As far as I'm concerned. There are two people, but I'll talk about only this one today. Castro is a modern day Nehemiah. <laughs> Fidel Castro. He is a modern day Nehemiah. I began the revolution with 82 men. If I had to do it again, I would with 10 or 15 and absolute faith. Your number doesn't matter if you have faith and a plan of action. This is Nehemiah. He had faith like Nehemiah and had a plan of action. After 50, and just like Neymar faced opposition and attempts to kill him, so did Castro face 500 attempts by the most powerful nation in the world, the US. They couldn't get him because if you are like Neymar, God will protect you. Castro never believed in yeah. your institutionalized religion, that you call Christianity, but he believed in absolute faith because you know what? For without faith, it is impossible to please God. Now, somebody who you think is anti-God is telling you that if you have absolute faith and a plan of action, you can do anything. So there, Castro pleased God and God protected Castro. That today, the most sensitive health indicator in the world under five-year mortality, Castro's Cuba is six out of thousand and United of America is seven out of thousand and Australia is five out of thousand, 
and my Ghana is 60 out of 1,000. In other words, if 1,000 children are born today, 60 of them will die before their fifth birthday. But in Cuba, only 6 out of them will die. That's the most, in, that's the most sensitive health indicator of the state of a country. And Castro, Cuba, is ahead of America in the same region as Australia, but it is a third world country. I can talk about Castro the whole day. But he said that if he had to do his revolution again, he's going to do it with only five, 10 to 15 people in absolute faith. Do you think those people in Ghana and Nigeria have any faith? They have not the faintest idea what they are doing. But we have a modern day Nehemiah. You should go and read how a country of 9 million people could send 52,000 soldiers to Angola to defeat America and nuclear arms South Africa in the, uh, in the, in the, uh, what they know what that was, she can know, Koito Kivana or whatever that war. That liberated not only Angola, but Namibia and eventually South Africa. One man, he marshaled and he supervised the war from Havana in Africa and he won 52. How can 90, how can 9 million people have, can, can be able to send 52,000 soldiers to another country when it's only 90 kilometers, 90 kilometers from America that he had people also to defend his own country? How did Castro do it? How did he do it? You cannot do it unless you have the spirit of Nehemiah. If there is something I want to do in this world, is God to give me the spirit of Nehemiah and the grace of Nehemiah. So I can go back to Ghana and go and seek the welfare of the people of Ghana. Cha, Umaniaba. Thank you so much, Dr. Nee. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That was a powerful teaching there. I really enjoyed that. Oh, we've got lots of comments here. Let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I was, oh, thank you, Sheik. I was actually going to pull this out. I, know you, I, I think I already know your answer, Dr. Nee, right here. Um, when you talk about God seeking a man, it says, she, she says, it can be a woman who seeks the welfare of the people, not just men, or <laughs> it could be a woman. That is totally acceptable. Woman. I wanted <laughs> to jump up and say, I'm the Nehemiah, I'm the Nehemiahness, I'm the Nehemiahness. I'll be more than happy to say, take over. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you for that comment, Evshika. Thank you. Okay. So, Victoria says, our leaders do not have the wisdom to lobby. Instead, they have the ability to beg from other countries. I hope they're listening to wisdom to help them change their poor mindsets. Thank you, uh, uh, Avik. Thank you very much, Avik. <laughs> okay. Chika um, again here says... Our people pay big money to lobbies in Washington and elsewhere, but it's mostly for the people there to overlook our bad habits like corruption, human rights abuses, etc. That is true too. Uh, the lobbying Neymar did was to rebuild the temple and the walls of Jerusalem and to take the people out of distress and misery. And that's what our people are not doing. Yes, they bribe people so that nobody talks about their corruption. And the destruction of their countries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a comment here from Larby Collins. I remember you declared a year of higher consciousness. I made an effort to be conscious as much as possible, and it is an amazing thing to be. Yes, yeah. because you see, people will have to understand that, like Einstein said, you cannot solve a problem at the same level of consciousness that created a problem in the first place. So it means that both problems and solutions come from consciousness. A low consciousness creates problems and high consciousness uh, brings solutions. So when I say year of conscious, high consciousness, I'm trying to understand that the way they are operating, their level of mindset, the way they see the world, they cannot solve the problem that, the problem that have emanated from that same level of thinking with the same level of conscious, they have to go higher. Mm -hmm. Once we we'll start thinking about themselves and what they will get from a particular scenario, and they are talking, at, they are looking at it that way, then nothing will happen. The conscience of sacrifice 
is what leads to everything. Nehemiah sacrificed, he sacrificed his whole entitlement as governor for 12 years, not one term, not two terms. In Ghana, that would be three years. For three terms, he did not take anything. Mm -hmm. And that's the highest consciousness because he was trying to say, example, that you are not the only person sacrificing. You've got a mind to work, but I'm doing exactly the same, even more than you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Higher consciousness. Okay. Um, your wife made a, the, the, I think the name you're trying to remember is a Quito Quanavale. Yeah, 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 Quito yeah. Uh, Quanavale, Quanavale, yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, Castro engineered and monitored the war there in 1980. Mm -hmm. And he defeated the combined armies of the U.S., South Africa, and Savimbi. One man. Then the population of Cuba was 9 million. It's even less than the population of Accra and Kumasi today. Mm -hmm. wow. The whole of Africa, 1.7 billion people, they are rolling in sand like morons. When Cuba, 11 million people, they are making their own vaccines against COVID. 11 million people, population of 11 million, they are making their own vaccine against COVID. They are in the third phase of trial, the last and final phase of trial. 1.7 billion, they are just begging because that's what they know. The mm -hmm. lowest consciousness. Castro, within a generation, wipe out malaria. Wipe out malaria. And this man was 90 kilometers or so from America. America was bringing on his on, 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 on his head 24-7. America has imposed sanctions, but he moved around it. He defeated America and Cuba in the Bay of Pigs uh, uh, rebellion, and he went to Angola and trashed America there, and to Namibia, and to South Africa. One man. Because he was in Nehemiah. Nobody will replicate Cuba. Not even me. If today, I mean, President, I don't think I can do what you, uh, Castro did. Impossible. Impossible. Wow. Yeah, impossible. Impossible. So just, you have to read about the Cuban Revolution. I mean, I, I, it's, it's just impossible. Absolutely. I mean, Shika will tell you that at some point in time, 100% of, so, of doctors in Angola were Cubans. How is that possible? How is that possible? By the time South Africa got his whatever independence 1994, it's 27 years now. By the time Cuba was 27 years into Castro's rule, he was self sufficient in teachers, in doctors, in soldiers, in whatever that he could give to others. 27 years with the wealth of South Africa, 80% of all world plutonium is in South Africa, 80%. They don't, they are not satisfied. Cuba is still sending doctors today because they have no Nehemiah. With all the world, they, they're not self sufficient in anything. Anything. And they are still relying on Cuba, which is one sixth of their population. Cuba is 11 million, South Africa is 60 million. With all the money and the infrastructure they are built by the white man, they are not self sufficient. They haven't built one single university. Go and see what Cuba did, uh, Castro did with no money, only sugar cane. We are talking about something different. The wow. enema comes once in a while. Mm -hmm. Enema comes once in a while. Enema mm -hmm. comes, and like Nema, he was there 50 years and did not take the governance provisions. When he died, what did he leave? What did he leave behind? He left behind his cigars and his military fatigues and nothing else. Not a single dollar anywhere. Not a single dollar anywhere. His enemies can say whatever they want to say, but they can't say he took money here. Of course, and the woman he just messed around a little bit after it was human. You know, <laughs> he 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 decided that okay. Yeah, you know, he also have fun, a little bit of fun. And that's all. So, it's little women here and there. I'm sure you go on official children all over the place. Fair enough. But that's what he left behind. Nothing. Nothing. He died and he's gone. He's, 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 he's beautifully sitting on the left side, left hand side of God. Jesus is right. Uh, Castro is left. Full stop. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. And he said that he could do what he did some time ago 
we started with 82, now we started with 10 or 15 people with absolute faith. Who understood God more than Castro? The, the Chechens, the Chechens who go and warm pews in the church room, do they know God? Can they do what Castro did? Can they even think about it? We are just joking, brothers and sisters. We are just joking. Let me just um, go through the rest of it. These are just comments, not questions, um, Dr. Nebo. I just want to like um, give them time as they as I took the time to write it. So I'm just going to breeze through these ones. Um, Lao B. Collins again said, Nee, you are a man of wisdom indeed. We must even seek guidance from wise people. That's that one. Thank you. <laughs> because, because I try very hard, because I try very hard to seek guidance from those I believe are better than me and those who have gone ahead of me. Excellent. Oh, yes, he has the hospital plan. Yes, and I have the plan. has posted a comment to confirm. Yes, he has the hospital plan, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. And uh, I can't remember what point she was pointing to, but uh, Victoria Kwasi here says, um, oh, sorry, I'll get rid of this one here first. Yeah, me, not in Africa where our leaders are autocratic. I'm not quite sure what point she's referring to. That's she goes there. I'm sure she's referring overall to what I'm saying that all that I'm saying, she doesn't believe it will happen in Africa because our leaders are, but you see, our leaders are there because we put them there. The day so you don't want them, there's nothing they can do. Absolutely nothing they can do. So don't worry about the autocracy, okay? The day will come when they will run a leader standards behind. Okay, another one from Victoria. She says, you're also a modern-day Jeremiah too, I believe. Ha, 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 I learn from them. I take guidance from them. Because if you want to be successful, you have to be guided by successful people. It's as simple as that. Yeah. And then she says, I don't, know, I don't want to mess up the first word she says. I won't pronounce it. But she goes, are you cool? 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 Okay. Okay. Are you going to say well done? What does that mean? Well done, well done, okay. well done. Well done. Yeah, hey, yeah, hey. The, okay. the response is yeah, hey. Okay, excellent. Thank yeah. you. And then the last one is from Ed Metal. Thank you, Doc. We'll always pray for you. Our God will protect. Thank you, Uncle Ed. Thank you very much. I know you do that. And please continue to even do it more because. When the Sambalat and the Tobias hear that a man has oh, come yes. to seek the welfare of the children of Israel, they'll be deeply distressed and they'll seek to harm me. But I'm telling you, nobody can harm me because you pray for me. God, late question here. Just now posted from Anthony Aqua. Interesting lecture. But what is the significance to all the Bible references to today's government and the future of Ghana and AR? I don't know what AR is. Or African reform, well, possibly. Yeah. That's why, the, that's why the lecture is interesting, Tony. Because what is written in the Bible is not religion. It's history of what happened to the people at a point in time. And like I said, they came to Nehemiah that the people in Jerusalem, the Jews in Jerusalem, who escaped the cap captivity, they were in distress. In Jerusalem, the walls have broken down and the gates have been burned with fire. At that time, he was in Medopedia, Medopedia. He was in Iran of today. So he sought permission to go and rebuild. And that's the relevance. The relevance is that the people in Ghana are in distress. And Ghana is broken down and the walls are burned with fire. So I need guidance, or I wish the guidance of Nehemiah to rebuild Ghana the way Nehemiah rebuilt Jerusalem. That is the relevance. I know some of us, we get very itchy when we see the word Bible, but for me, I learn from guidance. I learn. From, I don't learn from anything else. Okay. Thank you very much. I hope that's answered your question, Anthony. Thank you to all of you who took time to tune in and to post a question or a comment. Much appreciated. As always, don't forget to like this video on the YouTube and share it. So one of the things is that. That's why I found that like, people say they want change or this and the other. But as Dr. Nee, I believe he's touched upon it last week, what are you prepared to do for that? 
if all it's going to cost you is to share the video to a friend or to your friendship circle, so then to start taking in this level of wisdom, then at least do that much. Okay, let us, let us be doers of what it is we're hearing. We want the countries rebuilt, we want the continent rebuilt. Here is some key strategies and some excellent wis wisdom, just really supernaturally excellent wisdom that we should be sharing with our friends and our loved ones. So I encourage you to share the videos, share Dr. Nee's platforms and social medias with people that you know, and let them also start thinking in the way that he's thinking. I invite them to come along. Every Saturday at 12, we have a live um, um, episode. They're more than welcome to join and to post questions, but also more, most importantly, to be here to hear of a way forward, the way that Africa can experience reformation in our lifetime. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Dr. Nia, as always, for your wisdom. Yay! And we'll see you again it's next so week. Cold here. It's no joke. <laughs> it's no cold here. It's no joke. But, you know, <laughs> you have to do what you have to do. <laughs> hey. Yeah, so you do. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Take care, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.